Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this week we have a beautiful selection for you guys and girls with a lot of English brands actually from Fears to Ferrer to Bremont um, I think that's it oh and uh, Freeze watches and I think that's all the British watches on the table but there's a fair few and I think it's going to be a very interesting episode now as always if you want to skip to a specific watch on the table let's say you're just here to see this beautiful Amiga Polaris head down to the description you will see a timestamp for every single watch listed here as well as a link that will take you straight to the website where you can view the photos more details more photos under points of mention and everything else now if you are new here we do this every single Saturday 9 30 a.m on the dot new watches hit the website usually somewhere between 8 and 12 consistently it has been 12 so i think that's pretty much the going rate for watches going on the website at the moment now before we dive into the watches that are on the table what's on wrist i'm wearing my gorgeous 70s smith's jump hour with a smoky sort of creamy dial it's absolutely incredible and it is paired on a Zulu Alpha Straps NATO. Now, for those of you that don't know, these are great guys over in Liverpool. And I was very lucky to see the facility. I actually do the stitching myself on this NATO, technically putting it together with a very uh, good hand from Darren. Um, so thank you very much. It's kind of cool to have a strap, one, that suits this watch beautifully, but two, that I did the stitching myself. So it's a bit, bit rough around the edges, but definitely a fun experience. And I will be on their podcast, hopefully, in the next couple of days as of the day this goes out, um, Making Time. So if you search Making Time Zulu Alpha Straps on YouTube um, or Zulu Alpha Straps on Instagram, give them a follow. One, they make great products. They're branching out beyond straps and they're doing some really, really great stuff. And it's great to see it all made here in England or in the UK, um, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm all about supporting that. But the podcast episode will be out soon uh, where I talk openly and honestly about the pre-owned watch world and my experience at retail and so on and so on. So go check that out. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's crack on with the watches on the table. We're going to start with the latest reference Rolex Explorer 1. For those of you that um, are watching as of the day this goes out, hopefully they're both still there. I have the 36 and the 40 both on the website, both the new references. So if you are considering which one to go for, it'd be a great opportunity to book an appointment and try them both on. But let's take a closer look at this one. So starting this week off with one of the latest references of the Rolex Explorer. Now, as a lot of you will know, they discontinued the 39, released the 36, and then surprise us all, with the 40 mil um, so in circulation there's older 36 mils um, 39 mils new 36 mils and 40 mils and i have to be honest the difference between the 39 and this 40 is very marginal at most and at a glance i will probably struggle to tell you the massive differences between the two um, so yes with that in mind i would highly recommend coming in to try this one on um, we have, as I said at the intro, the modern 36mm reference in stock as well, so you get a feel for the both. But obviously it goes without saying, the 36 is smaller, the 40 is bigger, so if you prefer bigger watches, um, this is going to be the one for you. And obviously with it being pretty much all dial, it wears a lot bigger, in my opinion. So this is the 224270 reference, specifically from September 2023. It comes on its Oyster bracelet, and the condition is worn, there are scratches, um, some scratches slightly more significant than others, but everything you'd come to expect from a pre-owned watch that's been worn um, for, for you know over a year. As we flip it open, you can see plain case back as you'd expect, and inside there is the automatic Rolex Caliber 3230. Now, it goes without saying, if you do want this polished, we can do so. It will come at additional cost and time frame to delivery, but I don't think it needs it. At the end of the day, if you're gonna wear and enjoy this watch, pick it up as it is, put the scratches in yourself. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It's gonna end up looking just like this after um, a bit of wear yourself, so do keep that in mind. The bracelet has a little five mil uh, adjustable clasp which you just clip down like so and then pull it out like so as I say the watch comes with all of its links full box and paperwork and both swing tags so let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go comfortably paired on my seven inch wrist it works really really well again if you like bigger watches if you're not a fan of bigger watches this probably isn't going to be the one for you um, but I can totally get away with this on my wrist it doesn't feel too big or too clunky but I do personally prefer the 36 on my wrist but that's just personal preference at the end of the day so this is 40 mil by 46.5 mil look to look 
only 11.5 mil thick and 21 mil on the lugs so a little awkward but for me the modern explorers look best on the bracelets anyway but go check this one out on the website today from there over to a very beautiful and very special watch my favorite bremont actually i've ever stocked and i think it's really wonderful this is the bremont hawking limited edition to 388 in honor of hawking himself with uh, part of his desk and meteorite in the back of the watch as well as um, some of his most important contributions to, to the world. Um, really, really interesting, beautiful set as well that it comes with. This is very special watch. Uh, so let's take a closer look at this one. Now on to the Bremont Hawking. And as I said in the intro to this one, this is my favorite Bremont I have had in stock yet. And that's just from a design perspective. Now, obviously the connection with Hawking and the history and everything there, I think is really, really cool. Um, but for me, design wise, this speaks uh, very very well to me at six o'clock you will see the running seconds with hawking proudly stated in there and it's a retrograde second so if you keep an eye on that when it gets to 30 seconds it snaps back to zero uh, as we come and um, boom very very nicely done uh, i do love a retrograde on a watch you've got the the spiral on the inside almost like a black hole which i guess is the uh, inspiration there and i'll quickly say there will be far more details actually on the website about all of the the cues of this watch so do check that out make sure you read there if you're interested big date at six o'clock and just a beautiful design overall and a really nice shaped case as well uh, with the triptych case you'd come to expect from bremont a nice screw down crown uh, with a beautiful pattern on the crown itself and again nice having screw down and as we look at the screw down case back there isn't any of the movement actually visible but they have this beautiful plate on uh, their modified caliber the full reference caliber can be seen on the website but you have pieces of his original desk right here in the movement as well as a piece of meteorite um, and the limited edition number out of 388 total an absolutely incredible watch in stainless steel and again, a really cool piece of history. And it's the kind of thing, you know, on wrist, no one's going to really know what it is unless they know this model. Um, but you can start talking about it and it will definitely get a lot of people, I think, interested because it's a, not only just a beautiful watch, it's a piece of history and it's connecting everything um, everything together. This one's from April 2023 with a beautiful box set and its papers and all the extra bits and bobs. It's got like a pen, a strap changing tool, a little key fob. Um, everything is photographed, so do check that out. And it comes on its original strap with its original sign buckle, all in very nice and beautiful condition. So let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, comfortably on my seven inch wrist. It's a big watch, again, as you'd probably expect from Bremont, but it wears really nicely. And I actually like how this looks on the wrist, especially with that big domed polished bezel. Um, so dimensions here are 41 mil by 49 mil lug to lug, 14 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lug. So endless options if you're not a fan of this pairing, but I think it suits it beautifully. So go check it out on the website today. Now from there over to an IWC Pilots watch. This is the tribute to the Mark 11, limited to 1,948 pieces. A very, very nice watch from 2017, so an earlier reference, but let's take a closer look at this. Now one. onto an earlier limited edition IWC. This is the tribute to the Mark 11. 11, an absolutely beautiful watch limited to 1948 watches total um, and this is the reference IW327007 with that very attractive matte black dial the iconic hands and indices we've come to expect from the Mark series of IWC and a date nicely placed at three o'clock that sort of hides in with the overall design. I think they've done a good job of that. Uh, faux patina on the parts where there is loom, which is the, um, the 369 indice and the hands itself and a simple second hand crown at three o'clock. Sign screw down case back in there, which uh, is housing an automatic IWC caliber 35111. This comes paired on its original NATO strap with its IWC sign buckle, which suits the watch and design beautifully. And this is from December 2017 with its box and paperwork. It even comes with its original receipt and outer cardboard box as well. So uh, a nice complete set with this one, which is always a nice thing to have. It doesn't really matter a huge amount because you don't wear the box and papers. That's what I always tell people, but it's nice to have have and these natos are fantastic beautifully made with leather underside canvas top it just works very very well makes it last a while as well even with regular wear so i'm a big big fan of this one but let's show on wrist and talk dimensions 
And here we go on my 7 inch wrist, again on the larger side being all dial just like the Rolex Explorer 40 mil we just looked at but again it works very very well. This is 40 mil by 51 mil look to look, 10.5 mil on the thickness and that's not including the NATO which will obviously add a reasonable amount of thickness being padded canvas and leather. Uh, and 20 mil on the look so if you're not a fan of this pairing you could swap it out nice and easy for something else and I do think it looks surprisingly good on a huge variety of straps so go check this one out on the website today and now we have two Fizz watches on the table today both with the same strap pretty much um, this is the incredible Fizz Alliance with Christopher Ward 01 which is a jump hour one of my favorite Fizz um, that they've produced to date yet I think it's absolutely incredible and in collaboration with another one of my favorite brands Christopher Ward so let's take a closer look at this one next so we have this gorgeous Fizz and Christopher Ward Collective 01 Jump Power in burgundy red, limited to just 50 watches total. It's absolutely spectacular. So as you can see, you've got that gorgeous burgundy dial with an inner concentric circle and the minutes with a hand and a large hour up there. So let's show you how this works as you go past the hour. The date clicks over, uh, not the date, sorry. <laughs> Terrible habit there, the hours click over. So now you can see that's quarter past seven, half past seven, quarter to eight, eight o'clock. So that's how a jump hour works. And what they've done, or Christopher Ward and Fizz, they modified a Salita SW200 to house this kind of movement. And this reference is BS240.500. And as I said, limited to just 50 watches total. This one still features a sticker on the back. You've got the Christopher Ward logo, the Fizz Pipette logo, the number out of 50, and the Collective logo right there. Collective... Um, is a wonderful group of watchmakers doing everything they can to sort of propel British watchmaking and it's been great to see and they had an event recently which went down a huge success. I was unfortunately unable to go um, but from seeing how well it went it looked fantastic and I'm sure they'll do many more. Comes paired on its original strap with its original buckle and it's from January 2023 with its full box and paperwork lightly worn if worn ever to be honest. Um, crease to the strap where it's been kept in the box but really really wonderful example ready to be worn and enjoyed so let's show on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist this is definitely on the larger side for fears you know typically we expect smaller watches although they have released and have been doing for a little while now the 40 mil brunswick in general this is 40.5 mil and where's bigger than that 40 mil so 40.5 mil by 47 mil look to look 13 mil on the thickness and still just 20 mil on the look so it works really really well a beautiful watch so go check it out on the website today. From there over to a beautiful Fizz. This is the Archival Two Hander 1930 with 1960 engraved on the back. It was a limited edition uh, which covered all the years of production, uh, all, all the years that Fizz had been around since the start till you know uh, the most recent when they released this. Uh, and they did each year on the back of the watch, so kind of cool. So this is the only 1960 engraved one out there. So if that's a significant year to you, maybe a birth year or something like that, it's kind of cool to have. So let's take a closer look at that one. Next up, we have this beautiful Fizz Archival 1930 limited edition. You can go check out on the website all the details about this limited edition and how the numbering worked. But in a quick nutshell, basically there was a single number throughout the years available for each year that Fizz was, um, was in uh, business basically and then there was a short period where they were out of business and what they did with those years was turn them into a sub seconds model uh, as opposed to a two-hander so a very cool way of doing a limited edition not something i've actually seen before uh, personally but anyway this is the reference bs8-930-8 uh, s sorry and inside is a manually wound eta 2360 which are actually new old stock movements that fizz bought in um, basically took apart, replaced any parts that need to be replaced and just made them to today's standard. So a very cool concept, again, attaching into the whole heritage design and theme here. This one's from September 2021 with its full box and paperwork. Comes on its original beautiful Oxblood red strap with signed buckle. Nice big signed crown at three o'clock. Just a wonderful design overall. And it works on the wrist beautifully, which we'll show shortly. Dimensions wise for this one, they basically took their vintage watch and just blew everything up uh, slightly. So this isn't by any means a big watch and it's not a small watch. It's somewhere nicely in between. I think uh, Fizz did a very good job of doing that. Um, so yeah, you've got blued hands, a nice gold ring around the outside. Just wonderful. So let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. I find this watch incredibly comfortable and it looks absolutely beautiful as well. So this is 22 mil by 40 mil look to look. 
about 9.3 mil on the thickness and again still 20 mil on the lugs so really really great job at keeping all those straps 20 mil and you can see how thin the lugs are to make that work beautifully done so go check out this watch on the website today from there we're over to a grand seiko heritage collection 9f quartz a classic black dial oyster style bracelet you cannot go wrong with something like this especially at the price point well under two thousand pounds these are brilliant to get into a Grand Seiko. So let's take a closer look at this one. Next up, we have this incredible Grand Seiko, part of the Heritage Collection, and this is the 9F Quartz reference SBGX 261G in 37 mil with that clean black dial. Now, if you're looking to get into a Grand Seiko under 2,000 pounds, this is a great one to consider, and it's not just any old quartz movement. The Grand Seiko quartz movements are done to a far superior standard to most, especially this 9F series is sort of renowned within the collector's community. And this model specifically, I think is just perfect. It works beautifully, it looks incredible. It comes on the oyster style bracelet, but you could easily swap that out for a nice leather strap, and you've got something that's both sporty and dressy, and it ticks a lot of boxes. It's just clean, very, very clean. As I say, Oyster Bracelet comes with all of its links in the box. It still has the sticker on the back, and to be honest, it's hardly been worn, and specifically, this model is from December 2023, and the movement inside is the 9F62. So this watch is not very old at all, still comes with its manufacturer warranty, and has been lightly worn and ready to be enjoyed again. I mean, look how clean that aesthetic is, especially with the polished uh, finish on the hands and indices, which is what Grand Seiko are incredibly well known for. Nice small sign crown at three o'clock as well, which just works beautifully. So let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, you can see just how well the proportions work. 37 mil by 44 mil lug to lug, only 10 mil on the thickness and 19 mil on the lug. So a little awkward, but there's plenty of options out there with drilled lug holes to make strap changing nice and easy. So go check this one out on the website today. From there over to a Zin 556, but not just any Zin 556. This is a brown Japanese limited edition of 150 dial. Um, they have reproduced this kind of, um, but it's a glossy brown dial, and I've got to be honest, it doesn't look very nice to me, whereas this matte brown dial I think is fantastic. So let's take a closer look at that one. Now on to the Zin 556, which in its own right is an incredible reference that is well renowned among collectors, but this is a special limited edition of 150 pieces for the Japanese market, brown dial, and it's a matte brown dial. As I said in the intro to this, Zin have re-released technically this watch with the brown dial, but it's a glossy, shiny brown dial, whereas this matte brown dial I think is far more attractive personally and just works with the overall design. Really, really gorgeous example. Screw down crown at three o'clock. This is a added Zin bracelet, so it didn't come on this bracelet, um, but the original brown leather strap is included. Now it has no box and papers, unfortunately, but it does come with the bracelet box, which is quite a nice big box, all the spare links, all the different tools and everything you need uh, to do strap changing, as well as, as I said, the brown leather strap with the signed buckle. Um, really, really nice little thing. It's open uh, exhibition case back, showcase an automatic ETA caliber 2824. And the reference specifically to this one is 556BR, and it's from the circa 2010s. I believe it was exactly 2010 when they released the model, so it probably sold in 2010. But a really, really wonderful watch if you're after a Zin, but you want something with a slight spice, something a little bit different to it, this definitely ticks that box. And again, it's the kind of thing in certain lights, you won't even notice it's brown, um, but then in other lights, it catches that light beautifully. And all of a sudden, you end up with this really interesting chocolatey dial. It's almost like a tropical brown, um, rather than like a chocolatey brown, actually. So I think it works beautifully. But let's show this on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. As always with Zin, they wear very, very well. This is 38 mil by 45.5 mil lug to lug, only 11 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lugs with drilled lug holes to make strap changing nice and easy. So go check this one out on the website today. And then on to my favorite watch on the table. This is a beauty. This is a Hoya Chronograph Inca Block 1611 with the Vauju 7765 in stupendous condition with the original buckle as well. I don't think this is going to last at all. It's an incredible and beautiful piece. So let's take a closer look. This is another one of those watches where if I had unlimited money, this would not be making it to the website and it would be staying on my wrist. This is absolutely gorgeous. 
Hoya Inca Block Chronograph Reference 1611, and inside behind that closed screw down case back is a manually wound Valju Calibre 7765. Now, as you can see, it has your running seconds at 9 o'clock, a 30 minute totalizer for the chronograph at 12 o'clock, and then no dial actually at 3 o'clock, but they incorporate it beautifully with the date and Hoya at 6 o'clock. So everything kind of feels like upside down, um, which I'm a big, big fan of, and I think they've done a great job. The condition of this one, is pretty much near new old stock, to be honest with you. A slight mark on the bezel uh, at around one, half one, two o'clock. Um, other than that, yeah, you can't really go wrong. Hoya sign crown, as I say, original sign screw down case back, and a nice original Hoya buckle right there. Not an original Hoya strap, but a beautifully matched strap, in my opinion, with the pops of red. Now, these models, there's a lot of uh, different sort of opinions on them. Uh, as far as I'm aware, these were released in the circa very late 60s, early 70s, when Hoya was doing incredibly well with the Carrera, the Monaco, the Ortavia, you know, all the different model lines that had a name. And what Hoya decided to do was make a more affordable option, just as Rolex had done with Tudor. And what they did is they used a more affordable value movement with less complication, so you only had 30 minutes instead of full 12 hours. They changed the, des the design slightly, and they offered it at a more affordable price point because it wasn't a Carrera or an Ortavia, but it was still just as beautiful. Um, and again, these were more affordable. That's the kind of amazing thing, and they still are today for the price of this, considering condition and just how beautiful it is. I think it's amazing. I think it's really, really, really good value. So let's show this one on wrist and talk dimension. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. I mean, just look at that, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. This is 38 mil by 44 mil look to look, only 12.5 mil on the thickness and 18 mil on the look. So endless options for this one. So go check out this beauty on the website today. From there over to a free swatch. This is the Freeze 101 Series 1 automatic 39 mil with sword hands and a blue bezel. Very, very nice. And Freeze watches have been doing great stuff by um, Simon Freeze over there, watchmaker. I believe they see and see the cases in house. There's a lot that goes into these. I think it's really, really incredible. Um, so let's take a close look. Now on to a very early Freeze watch. This is the Freeze 101 Series 1 with that beautiful textured black dial to make uh, made to look vintage with the sword hands very similar to what a mill sub would be and instead of a t in the circle you have f in the circle which is the logo for freeze a nice blue bezel as you can see right there screw down crown at three o'clock a nice oyster style case with a screw down case back showcasing the number out of 101 that they did Nice strap, uh, which has the Freeze logo down there, and original buckle, which is unsigned. So as I say, this is the Freeze 101. I, it's the first one we've had in stock, but I've handled quite a few of them now, and I've met Simon a couple of times as well at different events. Really great guy, and I love what he's doing, and I think these are fantastic. So inside is an automatic ETA Calibre 2824. And this one's from January 2021 with its box and papers, and the box is a very heavy-duty metal sort of uh, box and inside is a nice brown leather pouch, uh, which is very usable. The hands are these iconic sword hands with faux patina. Uh, they don't actually glow, but you have this really wonderful um, texture to them. It really does look like an old vintage watch from afar. You could be you know, wearing a Millsub, uh, for example, which is obviously the, the aim of this watch. But let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, it's actually 39 mil, not quite the 40 mil you expect of the Oyster, but it wears really well. So 39 mil by 47.5 mil. Look to look, 15 mil on the thickness. Do keep in mind a lot of that is in that heavily domed acrylic crystal on top of the watch and 20 mil on the lugs. So nice and easy for swapping this out if you want to try something else on it. But go check it out on the website today. From there over to another English brand. As I say, a lot on the table today. This is the Ferro Rocher or Roque or however you pronounce it. I butcher it every time. I think it's the Rocher. Roche? Roche. I don't know. World Timer Blue Automatic 39mm. Regardless of my butchering of the pronunciation, it's a beautiful watch. So let's take a close look. Now on to the wonderful Ferrer Rocher Well Timer. This is now a discontinued model and they brought out a slightly updated version with a couple of aesthetic changes. You have a rotating Well Timer bezel, um, which goes all the way around, as you can see, operated via the crown here and a nice bronze inlaid crown, which Ferrer always do, uh, which you can use to wind set the watch. And when you rotate the hand, you can see that inner dial also moves so you can track multiple time zones at once, dated three o'clock, 
and as we flip it over, you're presented with an exhibition case back with that very bright red rotor. And beating away inside this watch is an automatic ETA caliber 2893-1 Elaborate. So it's a slightly upgraded and higher regulated version of the same ETA movement, which is really, really nice to have. It's from July 2022 with his box and paperwork on its original strap with its original buckle. You really can't go wrong with these models. Um, they're beautiful, they look great on the wrist, they're sized well, they're built well, and everything about them is just done to a very high standard considering the price. I've always been a big fan of Farrah. I like what they do, and I think they're definitely going places with their designs. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, you can see that just works perfectly at 39 mil by 46 mil lug to lug, only 10.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lug. So endless options for this one, but this textured strap, I think suits the watch perfectly. So go check it out on the website today. From there over to a beautiful Amiga Seamaster Polaris, two-tone, steel and gold, nicknamed the Owl Dial, and you'll see why with the subdials and how they're placed, it looks like an owl face, very beautiful. So let's take a close look. Now time for the Amiga Owl, as it's called. This is the Seamaster Polaris with the stainless steel and gold case with the gold inlay into the steel right there. Absolutely beautiful design and I think looks incredible, especially with this style bracelet and the clasp that's hidden away with the Amiga logo right there. Just to show you how this works, you press the button that's hidden away underneath, it opens up and that metal bar slides out and slides in to get over your hand. And then you just gotta line it up and click it in place. It takes a second to get used to, especially putting it on for the first time. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be more than fine. You can see a really nice clean gray dial with nice hands, a day of the week over on this subdial and the date over on the other subdial. So quite a useful function um, that just looks beautiful and all operates through the crown as you'd expect as well. Um, as we have a look at the case back, you'll see it's a snap on case back. Uh, let's open that up with Amiga Seamaster stated right there. And the reference to this is 396.1022. And inside this watch is a quartz Amiga caliber 1445 inside. The watch is from circa 1986 and it does come with two additional links um, and also a swing tag, which is very nice, but no original box or papers, but priced as such. And I think the value for money in such a beautiful watch like this, something that stands out among the crowd, I think is really, really cool. And again, the 80s definitely seems like the period where Amiga were trying out a few different designs. Some worked better than others, but this I think is a cool one. And I wouldn't actually be surprised to see them bring this back eventually. I think it'd do really well today, especially this integrated bracelet design, which everyone is all going crazy for at the moment. But let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Now don't be scared by the dimensions of this one because as the case is shaped like this, a more cushion style case and the integrated bracelet, it wears a lot bigger than the dimensions will lead you to believe. So it's 31.5 mil by 42 mil lug to lug, only 6.5 mil on the thickness, so incredibly thin and 18 mil at the lugs, tapering down ever so slightly. It's a very slight taper to the clasp, so it helps with wearability. But go check this one out on the website today. And last, but by no means least, a Bulliver from 1960. This is nine carat white gold on an integrated bracelet. Those of you that tuned in last week, and if you missed that, go check it out. We had a lot of beautiful full gold integrated bracelet watches. This is a much smaller 16.5 mil, so it's very small, but a nice size bracelet. Comes with a box, it's gorgeous. So let's take a closer look at this. Next one. is a beautiful nine carat white gold Bulliver with a gorgeous texture throughout the bracelet, as you can see here. And it's quite a long bracelet, actually, it's largest point. It's a tight squeeze on my wrist, um, which is kind of amazing. So this is a reference 422820 from circa 1968. As I try and focus on that dial, really simple silver dial with a slight discoloration from patina, which it actually suits beautifully. Uh, it's not plain silver. It's got almost like a slightly pinkish hue to it. Very hard to capture and well worth seeing in person, but you've got the black indices and two simple black hands an original bull of a signed crown, which is impossible to capture because of how small it is, and a snap-on case back. Again, you've got some general wear throughout to be expected. Um, and with it being nine carat gold, it can't just be polished. It has to be re rhodium plated if we were to do it. And we don't want to do that because we want to keep that texture beautiful on the bracelet. Um, inside is a manually wound Bulliver Calibre uh, 5AR, and as I say, circa 1968 on this one. It's 16.5 mil um, at, the, at the case. So definitely on the smaller side. And as I said in the intro to this, I actually wore it on my right wrist with my bracelet for, you know, like half a day. And I actually thought it was quite a cool little um, sort of dressier piece. 
It comes with a box, um, which is a very nice original bull of a box, and a lot of people would separate that from this watch and sell it with a different watch to try and maximize on it, but it came with this watch. I think it's a nice box to add with it. So let's actually show this one on my seven inch wrist and talk dimensions. And real quickly, I forgot to say the way the clasp works, and by the way, all of this is nine karat gold as well. You actually have a folding lock, which opens like so, and a lever, which pulls open. Um, and on the opposite side, you have two adjustments. So you slide it through, close it down, and snap the lock back on. So very nice, robust bracelet. Let's show on wrist. And here we go, snugly on my, snugly, is that a word? It is now, very snugly on my seven inch wrist. Uh, this is 16.5 mil by 16.5 mil, seven mil on the thickness, and nine mil at the widest point of the bracelet, tapering down to the clasp really elegant and beautiful piece of jewelry. So go check this one out on the website today. So there you have it guys and girls, 12 watches in this week's drop. Let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite? The Hoya is by far my favorite, but I could easily pick about, you know, I, well, I would happily wear every single watch actually on the table. I even put this one on almost as a bracelet on my other wrist. And I gotta be honest, I think there's something to it. You know, a lot of places are saying a ladies watch is the new thing in men's watches. I don't really care if it's a man's or woman's watch. If I like how it looks, I'll wear it. But this is obviously a lot smaller than uh, even like the 30 mil watches I comfortably wear. But I have to be honest, as a piece of jewelry, I thought it was really, really cool. Maybe that's the thing, I don't know. But uh, let me know down in the comments, what was your favorite? And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Um, there's some really great pieces already in that drop. Um, yeah, tune in, make sure you tune in. We'll see you all again then. Take care, bye-bye.